started. It's loading and we are live. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Hisam Artwork. In this video I'm going to color page uh, 68 from my comic, Niels Feynman. Uh, full name, Niels Feynman's Time Traveling Adventures, which is a pretty long name. Um, <laughs> but I think it's, it's sufficiently uh, descriptive, so there are not any issues as to what's going on. I just call him Niels Feynman. I'm trying to open an older page just so I have the colors on hand. See, we're panel two and three. See if I can get his pants. There we go. The color for them. So the story follows the adventures of Niels. He is a half Chinese, half Dutch boy from the 24th century. I'm trying to remember that. It's always a bit confusing for me that um, 24th century is actually the 2300s. So I always have to kind of think of it. Uh, wait, what, what, what? It's a bit of a counterintuitive convention for me. Uh, I mean, if you do think about it, it's like the best way to, to number these things, but my brain just doesn't work like that. Sadly. Just always need to think about it a bit. Also for uh, clocks, I don't know why. I've always preferred digital. The um, old watches with the um, tongues with the arrows. I always have to think of it. Especially if I'm tired, it's gonna be so <laughs> so hard to look at it. Like I can look at it five times and still not understand what time it is, just because I'm tired and I can't brain. For the shoes, I'm trying to figure out what it's the page that I have the shoes in. I think I'll just go to world and go to the character page.
I didn't think very much when I made these shoes. <laughs> They're, they've appeared more often than I would have liked in the comic. Uh, usually I ask you to do kind of like a simplified version. And this is the more simplified version. Don't spend too much time. <sighs> Sorry, on the shoes. Because let's face it, who cares about the details of the shoes? You're only gonna notice it if it's weird and wrong. June drew him rather handsomely from this side. <laughs> he was not a handsome dude. I, I think even if in, in his youth he was uh, not what we would consider a supermodel. See if I can find open map. There we go. push on the brackets to increase or decrease the size of the brush uh, okay I wasn't on the right one now okay now it's working so I had some kind of pencil selected How are you? How's it going? Uh, next week I want to draw your mermaid. I really liked the um, tigerfish mermaid you did. And I think I might actually catch May. Okay, so if I do it next week, it will be the 30th. So, like, last day I catch it. <laughs> Or maybe I should do it this weekend. Uh, I said I would play Stardew Valley. I can't decide. <laughs> I don't know. I'll see what I do. But I really liked your mermaid, so uh, I would be happy if I would get to, to draw it, because I thought you had a great idea with it. And I'm sorry you're tired. Could be a draw. Ah, draw me again. Yeah, I forgot about that. Like I completely forgot about it. Thanks for reminding me. I 
I should have labeled the one that June did as well with Draw Me Again. <laughs> I miss all of those events on 2. They were really fun. They were like easy and quick to do, so... Why did 2 have to die? Why can't we have nice things? <laughs> them too, yeah. I mean, I've seen a lot of people say that Steam it is good, but I just don't have the, the, the energy and, you know, the motivation to restart on another platform. I haven't, I think I haven't been on, on Instagram for, uh, over a month. It's just that I I really do not enjoy being there. I mostly get spam comments, um, and I get a lot of people that follow and unfollow. So it's just no incentive for me to be active there. And it's gotten like Facebook, where you have so many people that can just pay, you know, and get ahead because it's so full of advertising now and I mean on, on Facebook I still have people that are active and interact with my page so I'm, I'm still lingering on here but it was just uh, exhausting And I'm sad that Tapastic has kind of gone down the drain as well. It seems like I just don't have anywhere to go share my art and actually have any people interact much with it. And so then I'm not motivated to interact either. Like I go on, on Facebook and like your stuff and June's and that's just about it. I don't even look at my Facebook feed. I just go in to see and check my, my messages if I get anything and uh, uh, I remember to go and check your guys' pages and then I just go and like whatever uh, has been posted that week or since the last time I've been and uh, that's kind of my routine. Because you don't even get the the pages when they're when they are published. Like for example, my husband gets stuff um, oh, three days after I posted it. Like he'll get a message. Oh, his some artwork is going live in five minutes, and it's posted it's three days old.
no, they sometimes talk about golden age of things, and it kind of makes me wonder, like, have we gone past the golden age of social media? Will we ever get a, like, a revival? Because it's really gotten stale and, and unpleasant. And I don't know if it's me getting old or, you know, it just not being interesting anymore. drew the clock on the wrong hand again. <laughs> it's so tiny I didn't even see it but I'm glad I, I uh, saw it this time because um, I have posted in the past pages where the <laughs> clock wristwatch was on the wrong hand and I just didn't even notice uh, nobody in the audience noticed either which is nice but I got lazy <laughs> and <laughs> I've been meaning to, to correct that for a while now I'm like ah tomorrow tomorrow I will do it tomorrow <laughs> yeah I think I should make like a Q&A and just uh, ask people what I should talk about during my live stream because I have uh, I don't have much of an idea what I should keep saying without repeating myself though I don't even know where to post it because uh, just my activity has been really low on all my social medias for a while now like I post stuff and nobody really interacts with it so I don't even know where I should post you guys have any questions you would like answered um, let me know do I don't think there's much of a mystery about me or anything um, worth saying much
I don't know, I think it's the weather maybe as well. I'm just it, it rained so much and was cloudy and uh, so the general sentiment has been meh. Just wanna sleep. It's pretty cloudy today too, but I got some sunshine, so I'm gonna go out and do some exercise before I become too fat to fit through the door. Kind of reminds me of that um, joke that was going around the internet with stay safe, eat cake. to see that like on podcasts um, uh, you kind of have two people talking and I was thinking maybe I should try something like that but kind of the general fear for me is that it'll become too uh, stressful for me I'll have to do too many things at the same time Because, I mean, if, if more than five people get in the chat and write stuff to me, I, I start losing track. Because I have to look at what I'm painting and then uh, also add the chat and still think and say something interesting and, and competent at the same time. <laughs> But, you know, I would also like to do something uh, interesting for the stream. Not sure. I feel like just uh, me coloring is not uh, interesting enough. Usually I don't watch live streams. Just because I, I generally get overlooked. Because um, like I said, it's pretty difficult to uh, pay attention and uh, paint at the same time. So often I would say hi and then uh, not get a reply like ever because there are a bunch of other people talking in the chat. And even for small, um, small chats, like I've gone to, like small indie artists, and they also like they do not pay attention at the chat. And for me, it's just strange. I mean, why do you do it if you don't actually want to interact? But maybe I'm just viewing it wrong. And having people interact with them was never their goal. It was just to show what they're drawing and that's it. Hi June, how are you? How have you been? How are you feeling? <laughs> had a little headache today too I'm sorry about that hope you feel better soon I'm so happy I'm finally getting some good weather unfortunately it's raining a lot here uh, which means we can't really go to the forest with our bicycles because it's just mud everywhere, but hopefully um, this weekend we'll both be feeling better and we'll be able to go bicycling a bit.
Must be the weather, yeah. I don't know, it's just been really weird the amount of bad luck we've had and the people around us, like it's just been one one <laughs> health problem after another for just like everybody. <laughs> um even like the wives of, of friends <laughs> Uh, I have been sick, like it's just everybody, and different things, like one acquaintance had to pay $10,000 for a colonoscopy, and it's just $10,000, how can a exam, medical exam cost $10,000, it's just mind-boggling, $10,000. So a um, um, kind of a crappy one-room apartment in Bucharest, not the best neighborhood, um, can be uh, 40,000 euros. And it's a European capital, even if it's not the best capital in Europe. <laughs> but it's 4,000 euros, or at least it was. Yeah! And we're here in a little village in uh, in uh, Michigan. I mean, it's I understand it. It's the amazing USA and the land here is so valuable. But we were looking at some property here in the USA just for for curiosity, you know, uh, to kind of put in perspective how much we've been paying for rent for the past four years we've been living here and with the money we paid for rent we could have gotten a trailer home and one acre of land in the woods because <laughs> that's twenty eight thousand dollars and so with twenty eight thousand dollars you can get an acre of land in the woods and a trailer home with a um, fountain like a well for water and that's twenty eight thousand dollars and for a colonoscopy you pay um, ten thousand dollars <laughs> and we we're talking with some friends that moved here 30 years ago and they said well ten thousand dollars was the advance you would put down to buy a house and then the total house would be um, uh, sixty thousand dollars in the in the town, so in the woods, it's it's cheaper. The land is cheaper because you don't have um, gas or uh, sewage. You have the septic tank and so on and so forth. So you don't have access to the uh, infrastructure. But come on, I mean, how is that exam worth that much? Here f is 400 euros if you want to do it in a private structure and pay, yeah. Because if you go to like public hospital, then if you get, I mean in Romania that's how it works, you know, you go to your family doctor, you complain, oh, uh, it hurts, something in me hurts, and then they will give you a, um, um, we call it trimitere, which means ascending and the family doctor sends you to a specialist and that is free yeah I mean for us it, it's it's free as far as I know in, in Romania it's just crazy here in the USA how um, Shark laund money laund uh, money laundering sharks um, can parade as uh, insurance agents, and you know just prey on like the most vulnerable people that are poor and sick. Yeah, I mean, I I think this is pretty old European concept. It's not. Uh, a European Union concept, like it's something that's been before. Mm. 
I think pretty much ever since the revolutions and, and communism uh, governments have leaned more towards health for everyone because the healthier the population is the better it is overall like you don't really need to be a genius for it and I mean in Romania yeah but even if you pay it's 400 euros why the USA wants 10,000 it's it's amazing like how inflated and ridiculous the prices are here for for health care and uh, it's considered a free country where all these companies can prey on people but they're the most free country why else uh, Mexicans would want to come here if it's not great and I think it's just gonna keep getting worse until Mexicans will not want to come here anymore <laughs> and then I don't know what Americans will do if immigrants stop coming cause uh, they're not doing a great job with the education so if they're not making new doctors and new doctors are not coming from the outside they're gonna run into some pretty big problems later on down the road So yeah, anyway, I was uh, saying I met some British people when I was in Romania. So it was this British couple that had a little minivan and they went on to, to visit Europe. Because they liked traveling and they thought, well, we, if we don't travel when we're young, when are we going to travel? And um, she was black and he was white and usually in Romania we tend to think oh everything is better outside of Romania Romania stinks everything is better outside and for the most part that's uh, pretty true when you live next to France and Germany and Holland um, you're gonna think yeah it's <laughs> it's better outside but I mean if you compare it to Somalia I mean <laughs> often we would joke uh, oh, it's so bad, the food prices and the heating has gone so up in in Romania and then we would joke, well, at least we're not in Somalia. <laughs> so yeah, and this British couple told us that our uh, hospital system is actually better than the British hospitals and I thought, you must be crazy. <laughs> Like, I don't know, you guys said too much in the sun or something happened to you like, to say something like that, that uh, the Romanian health system is better than the British one. And, you know, we try to convince them that they're wrong and we told them, well, you know, in Romania you have to wait for hours on end to uh, have a doctor look at you. And they were like, yeah, this happens in in Britain all the time, in London, I mean there were some riots and my husband got hit in the head, that was what the lady was telling me and they cracked his skull open and he was bleeding and we went to emergency and like nobody was looking at him and <laughs> I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever heard something like that bad happen in, in Romania like we do have a lot of issues with corruption like nurses and doctors were stealing pills <laughs> that uh, and selling them on the black market or something else like that um, diluted um, uh, what do you call it disinfectant that caused a lot of problems because they were stealing disinfectant that you usually wash the floors of the hospital with and uh, they were selling that <laughs> so pretty much anything can be um, uh, stolen and sold in Romania so for me it was really hard to wrap my head around how much worse could the British healthcare system be uh, and you know after talking to somebody that experienced it firsthand and then with the Brexit and everything I kinda am surprised to think that um, 
the glorious UK that uh, has been a uh, empire that what do, what they usually say they they brag about being empire the biggest empire that ever was yeah so that was weird get that eye. Ah, gotta zoom in. Color Marie. I just love corgis, they're so cute and fluffy. And since it's one of the older and better taken care of breeds, um, they do seem to have like less health problems related to genetic inbreeding. But if I were to adopt a dog, I think I would still get like a uh, street mangy dog. <laughs> And I'm so happy that here in the USA, um, where I am anyway, um, people don't even have dogs in their in their yards usually. And if they do, I haven't seen any stray dog here. And it's hard to tell if it's a stray cat because usually people just let their cats go every which way, and they don't have any collars on their necks. Usually, they put tags underneath the skin. Because they do have the infrastructure here in in the in the USA. I had a cat back home in Romania, and my uncle is a veterinarian. And he said not to put a scar. Uh, welcome back. I was talking about how happy I am that there are no stray cats or dogs here in the USA. I mean, I'm here in where I live I mean I, I don't know if it's anywhere else if it's an issue but even when I went to Detroit and, and Chicago I did not see any stray uh, cats or dogs and I don't know if there are any stray cats here because um, they don't have a collar on so they don't get, uh, strangle themselves when jumping from tree to tree
Yeah, very good. I mean, in, in Romania is just full of them everywhere. Maybe in a big city like New York or some other place like that you'll find. Shelters are full of strays. Yeah, here in the U.S. that's what I hear as well, that uh, f there's full of them. But I haven't been to any shelter here and I don't know if there is one. Yeah, probably. Um, they've definitely done a lot of improvements in Bucharest as well. Um, there used to be full of stray animals when I was a kid, but um, once I finished university, I don't remember seeing any strays in the center. Like if you go um, to the periphery, uh, then you would, especially like in um, abandoned wooden areas. Like for example, there's an old farm and it's been completely abandoned so it gets overrun with either homeless people or um, stray animals. And I think it's really good that they have such organized systems about uh, stray animals, both here in the US and in Japan. Because they can be pretty dangerous. Uh, I think they have enough problems with uh, raccoons here in, in the US. Um, they've had a couple of outbreaks of rabies because of them. And people had to keep their pets inside the house and protect them at all times because they had a bunch of rabid raccoons that uh, usually they didn't pass a river but I think that summer it was pretty dry so they were able to cross the river from another state that um, I don't know if it had like more loose regulations or Maybe it had less funding, uh, or I don't know what the, what the issue was. That they, um, I understand that they regularly had outbreaks of rabies, and so one summer um, the raccoon, rabies raccoons, crossed the river and infected the Michigan population as well. We don't have rabies anymore here. Yeah, that's very good. I don't know if we have them in Romania. I wouldn't be surprised if we still had rabies for a bunch of uh, animals. I'm super glad that um, living pretty close to the forest here, I get so many animals everywhere. Like I have squirrels, I have bunnies, I have a whole bunch of animals come and, and visit the, um, the university campus. I haven't seen any deer yet right on campus, I've only seen it um, in the woods or usually dead on the street, hit by a car. Sadly.
Well, there just aren't that many predators around aside from the occasional coyote or um, um, mountain lion. Y you don't usually get anything around here. And it's my understanding that, you know, if they're peaceful and they mind their own business, they, they leave the individual alone, but like even bears, they'll leave them alone. But if they um, get into livestock or uh, uh, attack anybody, then they will go and hunt that individual down. Okay, page 62. <laughs> like shoo shoo. He has such a dramatic face here. He looks like he lost the love of his life. Niels, the dishes. I forgot the dishes. I mean, I would have the same tragic face too, I have to admit. Um, I don't want to do the dishes ever, but I still have to. And if there was someone that did the dishes and they would run away without doing the dishes, I'd be just as devastated as him. You gave him a very, um, um, pretty face in this profile. <laughs> I think he's missing some, um, age wrinkles. This is how he looked usually. I think that's his good side. You know how you have some actors that have contracts that you can only film them from a certain angle because that's their good side. I would definitely say that that's Newton's good side. But did you change the window? Like, now I realize. Because it looks like this here. And it looks like this here. <laughs> uh, I think I have to, like, draw a line in the middle. So it looks the same. You hate windows. Actually, I think I need to, like, um, move the line art closer to each other, maybe. No, I think I need to erase this one. Even though I like this design a lot more, it's just that it doesn't match the previous one. It's easy to edit the line art. This is what I love about Clip Studio Paint.
Although I don't know how it was in other in other pages, I think that one was the wrong one and you actually did it right this time. I have to go and check. Cause now you made me think, hmm, how was it supposed to be actually? Uh in chapter one, because that's the window where he comes in through. So it'll we'll take the, the first appearance as the correct one. Yep, you drew it right now, correctly now, but the other one was wrong, so okay. I have to correct that one. This is actually good. So I need to go back to page 62 and correct the window. Because I think I left it that way. Let's see. Yep, I have to correct page 62. <laughs> okay, I'll, I will write it down to correct. Correct. Page 62 window. And I had something else to correct. Like, let me check and see. Yep, so this is page 65, the watch is on the wrong hand. Yeah, it's okay, I missed it too, like it's little details like this, like usually I focus on the face to make sure it matches the expression of the dialogue I have written down in, in the notebook. Um, and then like windows I forget to check because nobody usually cares anyway watch is on the wrong hand <laughs> yep um at least we're not like a big budget animation you know, like um, like Disney is. They don't have any excuse to make these mistakes. They have armies of people to to check this stuff. We're not even low budget. We're just no budget. <laughs> so I think we're allowed to to have little mistakes. They can be forgiven. I think the body comes over so it doesn't matter. Yeah, it just comes over. <laughs> Move it to the middle, okay. <laughs> there we go. Now it's in the right place. <laughs> You know, there are a lot of um, famous writers now, but um, when they were young, they had like these horrible, very unprofessional books that they've written because they were still learning. <laughs> and 
Um, fortunately, some of them they were able to take off print because they were so bad and um, they're not printed anymore. But of course, the, the internet finds a way to get those crappy copies. Um, I mean, even now for Game of Thrones, the pilot episode that had different actors and was just really bad and they had to ref refilm everything. Um, the the um, producers of uh, Game of Thrones, Dan and Dave, they, they've managed to burn every copy, to destroy every copy out there. Uh, and to convince those that may have seen it to never speak of it again. So it was really hilarious, and I was thinking, man, and I'm recording live how I'm, how I'm doing this, and I'm sure, I mean, I look back 10 years of stuff that I've done 10 years ago, and I think, oh my god, I was so bad, I'm such a horrible artist, I'm so incompetent, and so on, and now I'm recording it live <laughs> for YouTube, but what I do do for my peace of mind is I periodically delete old streams uh, if I see that they didn't get many views um, I just delete them <laughs> like if they have a few likes or stuff like that um, I just uh, <laughs> delete them because my voice is horrible and I do make a lot of mistakes when doing these pages <laughs> so I do periodically go in and delete them and sleep better at night And I guess the great thing is that not being famous, like, nobody cares, like, nobody's gonna save these videos. So we're good. Hi, Yuki Bean, how are you? How's it going? Can you hear me okay? Awesome. Welcome to my channel. I'm coloring pages for my comic. Uh, June here, my friend, she does the line art. Thank you, she's very talented, yes. And I'm using Clip Studio Paint uh, to uh, color it, and she also used Clip Studio Paint to do the line art because it's a lot easier to do um, comics in Clip Studio Paint. It used to be called uh, Studio Manga, and it's uh, very good for making comics, especially in the Japanese style. It has a lot of features for that. Like here you have 3D models that you can use as a reference or to help you. And you had like pre-made poses. Let's see, can I put it in the file? It's, yes. <laughs> Can't remember how to turn them though. Eee. <laughs> mm. 
Now I want the whole person to turn. Uh huh, got it. It's a very narrow place where you can turn it. And now I gotta scrap this layer because I don't need it. Thank you. I'm glad you like them. I have so many that I have to put up on Nexus mods, but I just haven't had the time. Because there's so many, um, f um, how should I say, paperwork I have to fill out. Like, which version of the mod is? Is it with uh, any help from other people? Link those, put that, put links for the other thing. And I just never get around to. Like, I have the Toothless statue that I have to um, put on there on Stardew Valley. I already have it, and I put it on the group. But I haven't had the time to... Uh, put it on Nexus <laughs> but I mean to at some point gotta do it cause I haven't seen anybody else put up a mod with that so also I've been trying to find a horse to donkey retexture and I haven't found one anywhere and I'm surprised that nobody uh, drew a donkey or a camel uh, for the horse so I, I'm gonna have to do that cause um, I'm working on a desert expansion mod so uh, I wanna have donkeys and camels Ideally, you can interact with them as well, but I think that may may take a while. We're uh, we're still waiting on the um, the beta to end because this moppy has been getting a lot of updates. So the coders can't really do much. And meantime, I'm just working on the textures of things that we think we might be able to do, like have NPCs and houses and stuff like that. Where I'm from? I'm from Europe. Uh, I think you can call it the Balkan area. select why is it why isn't it straight like it's super weird it's not selecting straight I think it's snapping to the grid somehow let's see if I Oh, my my um, paper is is not straight. Okay. Can I select the level? Doesn't want me to input. Okay. That was so weird. It was like f half a degree <laughs> uh, tilted. Cool. Thank you, Yuki. I couldn't understand why the square wasn't uh, right. Like, I don't know how I managed to tilt it a bit, but it was like half a degree tilted. <laughs> and that messed up everything.
Yeah, you always have to be careful because all of these programs have so many buttons and so many like features that uh, it's super easy to just click on something and then mess it up completely. And if you're new to the program or to digital digital art in in, um, in general, it can be like pretty frustrating. Uh, why isn't it working? And then you kind of realize that you selected something wrong. Or you have a mask on, or something else like that. Okay. How many people have come to see the screen? What screen? I'm not sure what you mean. Ah, the stream. I don't know, I would have to go check the statistics. Usually it, uh, it can tell me afterwards, I usually look. But I don't think there's more than five people watching on all the three channels in any given time. I think like the most I've had ever was 20 people. So uh, I don't think there, I ever had more than 20 people. And usually I prefer it when it's just a couple of people talking because I have time to uh, to read all the comments that people leave me and I have time to reply. If there are too many people then I have a hard time um, following like if there are more than five people talking in the chat at the same time uh, I don't have time to, to read all of them before they go up and I use, I'm use i using Restream so you can see uh, you can see here how uh, it's the Restream chat so it takes the chat from my YouTube, my Picarto and my Twitch and um, Whatever you guys comment there, I see it uh, here, all of them, but I don't have any scroll bar. So once a comment is gone, it's gone. I have to go to that uh, chat and scroll up to see there. And usually I don't get to, to do that. And today has been a, a slow, nice day for me. I've had um, three people come in and chat. It's really hard to talk to the streamer sometimes, so it's nice to talk so easily. Yeah, usually I go on, on streaming uh, channels to kind of try and support my uh, fellow artists, but you know, unless we're friends and we like the same things, usually they'll not pay attention to what I say, so you normally you only get to say hi and uh, 
not ask any questions, which is too bad, because, I mean, if you're gonna do a live stream, why not give some info or help to beginner artists? Like, my sister is, um, she also likes to, to draw a lot, so a lot of these um, streams, when she comes on, I kind of give her a little tutorial or she asks me stuff or because there's such a big time zone difference between the two of us um, she'll watch the the stream um, offline in a weekend or when she has time and I made tutorials for her and for another friend who is also an artist and she wanted to learn how to paint as well and she got herself a tablet and she requested some tutorials so I made them for her and they're on my channel so whenever she needs to go check out something she can go and do it there and I really do prefer like a more like a smaller little um, uh, format for the for the chat sorry for the stream And I'm glad, I'm glad that uh, Restream has this format where it takes all the channels. I do kind of sometimes worry if there's nobody from the Picarto or Twitch channel, because usually I don't get that many from there. Uh, if there's nobody talking to me there, I wonder, oh, am I streaming there? Is it working? But usually it does, like I go and check uh, on my tablet and uh, it works, it's just that it happens that nobody is there. Usually I get most of my audience from um, uh, from YouTube and it's because I have most of my subscribers on YouTube, there's just more users on YouTube, the community is more active. Mm. June, I think you made the plate in the other side and I just didn't understand. So I think the plate was here. But it then uh, kind of stretches on a bit too much. Yeah, no problem. I was just a bit confused and I bamboozled myself as to what was going on. Then I saw the, the food remnants and I thought, oh, okay, wait, it was supposed to be here. to go now but it was a lot of fun being able to speak with you keep up the great work Hisame and June thank you Yuki Bean thank you for coming by glad you enjoyed it and see you next time that is such a cute name Yuki Bean <laughs> There's a lot of lag for the uh, emojis today on, on YouTube. 
which is kind of a weird thing to be lagging. You're loading the images much slower, it seems to me. Now all of these backgrounds, I can put them in uh, in Photoshop, I think. So I think I can end the stream here. And uh, I'll finish the rest offline with the dialogue and the uh, and the sheeting. Uh, and this Saturday, um, either I will do the mermaid for f uh, the redraw Anna's mermaid, or I will uh, play some Stardew Valley. Um, I'm not sure yet. I think it's pretty clear. Uh, not sure what you're referring to. Ah, I took a look at the next page sketch. I think it's pretty clear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks for, for reminding me. Uh, okay, I'll open it. Yeah, so here Niels is finishing uh, writing the, the math problem and he realizes that Erwin is missing and he asks, like, where's Erwin? And Marie says, Oh, he was bored, so he went parkouring. And Neil says, "What? He went parkouring without me." And then um, um, Erwin jumps from rooftop to rooftop, and he has some fancy stairs. Uh, I think I saved the page, or I'm not sure. Um, oh, college stairs. I saw an image. We're building outside. Um, where was it? Why didn't I save the page? Let me write Cambridge University. Like there was a courtyard and it had some uh, railing. Some ah ha ha ha! Found it. Okay. Yeah. So the stairs are outside, and it's uh, this one. If it will load. Selwyn College Old Court. I'm not sure where Old Court is supposed to be. I'll have to look. Ah, page not found. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna give you the Google search results. <laughs> or maybe I can copy image. Yeah, I'll save it. Uh, stairs, and I'll give you on, on Facebook the image. So yeah, like these stairs here, and he's just gliding off the um, the the railing. Uh, and then um, er, uh, Niels is upset. He's like, "Oh, he's having fun without me," and he says, "Sassafras," because that's like the only bad word he knows. And Marie tells him, "Oh, I heard that. You know, I heard you talking bad." Um, and then he goes to to Newton and shows him the math problem that Newton actually gave him some calculations of Hooke's work, and Hooke is like his enemy. And uh, 
Niels is super happy and proud of himself and he says like oh uh, maybe we can go see your observatory later tonight because it's gonna be good weather and look at me I'm such a good boy and I did all the calculations please um, uh, master Newton spend more time with me like praise me I'm such a good student and Newton is is not impressed because this kid is super suspicious and he asks him like who taught you this math and Niels kind of has to lie and says oops uh, gulp uh, uh, Humphrey told me he's such a good uh, godfather uh, Humphrey being Newton's assistant and um, Newton says oh I thought he was your uncle and Neil says, oh, uh, he's both. He's my uncle and my godfather. And he's sweating really badly because he's lying so much through his teeth and trying to keep a straight face. And from what I read in the UK, uh, at this time in the 17th century, it was possible to be a uh, <laughs> little liar, yeah, to be a um, godfather even if you weren't married but you had to be like the same kind of protestant like you couldn't be jewish and be a godfather at that time so what niels is lying about actually kind of works it's just it wasn't normal to have an unmarried couple be the godfather like you would need a godfather and a godmother but it wasn't mandatory for them to be married it was just weird if they weren't <laughs> like if they were separate people and in some cases um, the parents could be the godparents of the child but it wasn't normal like usually would ask somebody else to be the parent you can be the godparents of your child so yeah the uh, bureaucracy of God parenting. <laughs> so I had to research this to be sure that he wasn't lying poorly. Like at least if he was lying he was somewhat credible. <laughs> yeah they are really? I I've never met anyone where the parents were the godparents as well. Uh, like I don't think that's something that is done in Romania at all. I've never met anybody w with like that. I've, it's always been like you know siblings or friends. Most often in Romania the godparents are friends of the parents. So for example my sister um, it's my high school uh, my my father's high school friend uh, he's married to a Christian but he's Jewish so my sister is baptized as a Christian but her father is Muslim and her godfather is Jewish <laughs> so basically I was the only one without godparents you're the middle middle child, right? Like usually the middle child gets neglected like that. <laughs> I'm sorry for you. I don't have any godparents uh, with on with a certificate, you know, because now at the church they give certificates. <laughs> they give you like a certificate you are baptized. Let's see if I can find any pictures. Because it's super funny. I don't know if you guys have this, but in Romania we do. The Patriarch of Romanian Orthodox Church, blah blah blah. So, uh, I'm, I'm surprised it's in English I don't know what this is oh okay certificate de votes parohia bisericii sfântul Ioan botezătorul din Brăila so the parish of the church of Saint John the Baptist from the city of Brăila and is a certificate of baptism 
Yeah, now they do it, so <laughs> you have a certificate. And I, I imagine you go this at the, um, what's it called, St. Peter's uh, Gate. And you go with your birth certificate, you with your passport, and with your certificate of baptism. And you say, hey, look, I, I'm actually a Christian. You can let me in. I have all the paperwork done. <laughs> Oh, and you have a certificate for un unbaptizing. <laughs> but I, I, I don't think... I mean, I, I'm not sure if this is a prank or not. Like, it seems serious. Oh my god, this is for real. Um, it says here... The Devil's Work Which Clouds Your Mind Certificate of Unbaptizing A diabolical mind can only think of such a deed um, an official act by which you uh, annul the baptism and then as if baptism was bound to a paper And they're super upset. Oh, this um, atheist is playing with the holy baptism as if it were a doll. He thinks he will not be judged by what he does. <laughs> and it's the the text is super funny. So certificate of an unbaptizing. Uh, Chobanu Dragos, which means shepherd. Dragos, uh, Chobanu is like a family name, like Shepherd, is a free citizen. He's not the the slave of God. Rob um, means worker or slave, and you usually like you would have like servants bound to the land. And for example, when two people marry in an Orthodox Romanian church, like uh, they will be addressed as Robului um, Dumnezeu, which means like the worker or slave of God. Uh, do you accept to take this woman as your wife and blah 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 stuff like that? <laughs> so this is super funny because they're making fun of that. Uh, so Chobanu Dragos is a free citizen, not the slave of God. Um, the effects of his forced baptism have been annulled starting with this day and then it's signed and stuff like that <laughs> ah, this is funny can't believe it's like it's real with what people spend your time with but it was funny like all the angry people in the in the comments that the guy did that But it's gotten uh, pretty popular. I was surprised that Protestants don't have this Godfather thing as much as Catholics or um, Orthodox. Like it seems to be more of the old um, version of um, Christianity that had this, and uh, it seems like they're doing now like a. Um, in a legalized form that is accepted by uh, the city by the state legislative for example if the parents die in a car crash um, they can now uh, let the child be taken care of by somebody else uh, you know ex aside from the grandparents because you know maybe the grandparents are super old and they can't take care of the child but they have some friends that might be able to take care of the child so even though they're not godparents they can still do some paperwork by which if that 
horrible tragedy would ever come, um, the child will still be taken care of legally, officially. Because, I mean, if you're not in the same state and if you have to go somewhere else, it's pretty complicated for a kid. And maybe where the grandparents are are not the best schools and you can only go to certain schools if you're in a certain district or state or whatever. It just gets really complicated. So I'm glad that they're doing this, like, officially. I don't know if it has always been under one form or another, but... Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly about how Protestants do things here. I mean, they have circumcision Protestants in the US, which I think is kind of strange. Um, cuz as far as I know, you don't have circumcision uh in Catholics or Orthodox. So I was a bit surprised to find out that you have it in whatever type of Protestants they have here. Where did it export it? Hmm. I don't know where I saved my file. I think it didn't save in this folder for whatever reason. Oh, my fonts are broken? Why? Uh, 68? Where did I put my files? <laughs> Nope, it's not here. What did I do? <laughs> I lost my, my page. I worked on it and I don't know where I saved it. I'm gonna open an old one, see if I can find it that way. Did I name it differently? <laughs> Recent files, okay. I don't know, like my my uh, Windows did some updates and some programs got uninstalled uh, and um, fonts got uninstalled. Like for example, Stardew Valley got um, my my beta was erased for whatever reason. It was just weird. Okay, so, um... Yeah, if I put it in the main folder instead of the normal folder... But I don't see the... Uh, Clip Studio Paint file for it. Okay, there it is. Found it. Just put it in the wrong place.
So yeah, this is gonna be for uh, for today. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I will continue the rest offline because I need to reinstall all of the fonts because they got uninstalled. I don't know. Whenever Windows does updates, something stops working. I'm glad that my tablet is working this time because in previous Windows updates, like they would bust my tablet and it wouldn't work anymore, the drivers were all screwed up. Yep, goodbye June, take care everyone, bye bye.